Wow. Adios, Humboldt. Now, there aren't too many things that we can collectively agree on as a country these days, but one thing that we certainly all can agree on is that gas prices right now are absolutely insane. There are certainly cheaper and more fuel efficient ways to road trip and car camp. There's fuel efficient vans nowadays, minivans, Subarus, all kinds of vehicles, even Priuses. I've seen people live in Priuses and travel in Priuses and car camp full time in Priuses. And trust me, with these gas prices lately, I have definitely been considering some of these alternatives. But honestly, at the end of the day, I just love the versatility of a four-wheel drive truck and it's also a good feeling knowing that if you want to go somewhere there's a good chance that your truck is going to be able to get you there. Plus if I ever want to get like another truck camper or something like that, a high-rise camper shell, like there's just all kinds of different configurations and at the end of the day for me that extra versatility is a little bit more advantageous than something with better gas mileage. Because hopefully, like all things in life, this will pass and hopefully we see regular gas prices return to normal pretty soon. Guys, it looks like we hit the jackpot with places to spend the night. This spot is epic. I'm one of the only people out here. It's super remote, super secluded. As you can see from the footage, it's it's an epic spot to truck camp. It's kind of windy outside right now. Of course, we're at the beach. So that being said, I'm gonna prepare the food and I probably won't be able to talk much because the wind noise is just really gonna interfere with the video, but you guys will see what we've got in store. It's gonna be a tasty one, so sit tight. I interrupt this video with the message from the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Manscaped is the global brand in men's hygiene and grooming products. Now, I just got back from a trip where I spent a couple weeks on the road, and we all know that when you're on the road, things get pretty stinky and gross, if you know what I'm talking about. Luckily, in order to mitigate some of these unwanted odors and messiness in the areas that matter the most, Manscaped offers a variety of very high quality products. This is the all-in-one performance package 4.0. Now right off the bat, you could tell that everything is very high quality from the materials to the packaging, the labels, like everything is very well designed. This is the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It's an electric waterproof trimmer that has a built-in light and ceramic blades to help reduce nicks to all of those very sensitive regions. In the kit, you also get the Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Manscaped really does have you covered head to toe. This is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. It's got skin safe technology so you never have to worry about tugging or cutting those sensitive hairs. For a limited time, you get all of this plus two free gifts. The shed, which is a very cool schnazzy travel bag, and also 
some Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. Make sure to go to manscaped.com and get 20% off of your order with promo code YENCH. You'll also get two free gifts and free international shipping. Remember, always use the right tools for the job. Okay, back to the video. While all that food is getting ready, I'm just gonna show you guys my setup that I've got going on here real quick. So as you can see, this is my very minimalist setup. We've got my sleeping area over here on the left side. I've got a little foam pad. A This is a, a sleeping pad, a camping sleeping pad that I have underneath. I've got a blanket for extra cushion and just for comfort and then my 20 degree quilt. And then over on this side, it's a little bit chaotic right now just because we're cooking, but I have a table in case I need a table, a couple bins just for all of my camping and cooking stuff. And then we've got my clothing 
up here, and just a few miscellaneous items over there. Now, I know you guys are anxious to see me build out the back of the truck, and it's coming, I promise. I've just been swamped with being out of town, and then I had a few other projects and things that I had going on, so I just haven't gotten a chance. But as soon as I get back up to Oregon, I'm gonna get started on it. So very, very soon from now, I'm gonna have an actual build in the back of the truck. Honestly, this minimalist setup has worked for the time being. You don't really need that many comforts. Obviously it is nice, which is why I'm gonna build out the back of the truck. But if you're in a pinch or you just don't have time or you're limited on resources or whatever, this kind of setup right here is totally doable. And honestly, it's been very comfortable other than the camper shell not being insulated because it's aluminum. But other than that, I mean, this the setup has worked, but in case you're wondering, the truck build is coming very, very soon, I promise. That was a process, <laughs> took a really long time. Let me just explain what I made. This is a garlic ginger uh, chicken with pineapple and red onions, as you saw. You saw everything that went into it, so you know exactly what it is. But this recipe I originally found, it was actually supposed to be chicken kebabs with chunks of pineapple and um, red onion, but when I read the recipe, I thought that would be really good on top of some rice as a bowl, and it'd probably be a little bit more filling. So I paired it with a little bit of lime cilantro rice, and it looks really good. It took forever. Oh, there's another person that just drove by. Anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna give this a taste test. Oh yeah. Mm. I think the lime cilantro rice paired with this, that was a good move. This is really, really solid. Mm. I do wanna take this opportunity to uh, clear the air about something that's been brought up in the comment section over the last few videos. Some of you have speculated that Tessa, my girlfriend and I had broken up because I posted a few videos ago that something bad happened and I was feeling really down. But that's not the case. Tessa and I are still together. We're still living together. We're still going strong. Nothing happened between us. Um, essentially what happened when I posted that video and I was feeling really down is I got some bad news that a close friend of mine had passed away. And so I didn't really want to talk about it um, I didn't really feel the need to disclose that to you guys because that's just something that I didn't really f feel the need to share. But that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, I'm doing a lot better now. And the last couple weeks, all the time that I've spent with friends and family has been really nice and healing in that sense. But Tess and I are still, Tess and I are still together. I just wanted to make that clear because I keep getting comments saying, why did Tessa break up with you? Is Tessa doing okay? Are you and Tessa still together? So on and so forth. So I figured that I better clear the air and let you guys know right now. Uh, 
time to clean up. I was kind of cleaning as I went, so I don't have much to clean up, but I just got to put away the stove, the pots, the pans, wipe things down a little bit. I'm not going to do dishes right now because it's dark and I don't want to deal with that. I'll probably do dishes in the morning for now. Everything's just going to get a nice little wipe down. So I'm honestly feeling a little bit sketchy about the tide because I just don't, I don't know exactly how far the tide comes in. Some of the sand up here is wet and according to my iOverlander app, which is the app where I found the spot, uh, some people said that on certain nights the tide actually comes all the way up and covers the entire beach and it's obviously dark outside right now so I really can't see how far the tide is coming in. So all that said, I think pretty soon here after I chill out for a little bit, I think I'm just gonna move my truck up into the actual parking lot to be safe because in an instance like this, I would definitely rather play it safe than wake up to my truck floating out to the ocean or like completely submerged in water. I'm sure it wouldn't get that bad before I realized, but at the same time, like I said, in this instance, I'd rather play it safe rather than to be sorry. So I ended up moving the truck into the parking lot because, well, I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep knowing that the potential of getting washed out to sea was always a risk. So at the very least, now I could get a good night's sleep. Speaking of a good night's sleep, I'm going to call it a night here and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Not not a bad view to wake up to, huh? Guys, I have some some pretty terrible news. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I've run out of coffee filters, so I can't make coffee today. But not to worry. There's a town nearby, and I'm sure they have coffee there, so I'll get my coffee. I'll get my coffee one way or another. That's for sure.
Check that out. You. Good morning. Good. How are you doing? Good. I'll do the. Uh, I'll get one of these cinnamon swirl breads and a 12, 16 ounce drip coffee. Yeah. Got my coffee, as promised. Woo! Also got this cinnamon swirl bread. Three bucks, and this thing, this thing's got some weight to it. It is a hefty piece of cinnamon bread. It's not your Starbucks tiny little cinnamon bread piece that costs five dollars. Three bucks for this. Hey there. Did you fill it with regular, please? That's for the gas cap. Cash card. Ah, uh, card. Uh, no, I'm okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Right, you have a good day. Likewise. So gas here is $4.83 a gallon, which is a lot better than the $5.99 in Northern California. But just for reference, here in Oregon, the typical average from what I've seen so far is around $3.60 to $3.70. So it's still well over a dollar. Not, not well over a dollar, but it's more than a dollar more than the average price, which is... It's not a, uh, it's not ideal, that's for sure. Anyways, that's just, that's the price of driving a V8 truck. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at you. In total, I spent about $200 in gas to get back here to Portland from Humboldt. So I think that's roughly, there's a little over 400 miles and it costs about $200. But I do still have some gas in the tank. I have a little under half a, half a tank. So that's what it costs right now in these heinous times. All right, folks, and that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys, like always, for watching. You guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life, beat the status quo. Y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.